1.3. Have all of you taken Calculus 3 with Mr. Vogel? I'm in it right now, so. I took it in my last class. Okay, then 1.3 is going to be review for all of you, or at least for two of you, because we're going to talk about vectors vectors in 1.3, and vectors also get taught in calculus 3. Yeah. So we'll start with a definition. A vector is a matrix with either one row or one column. And a matrix with one row is called a row vector. And a matrix with one column is called a column vector. And kind of by mutual consent, almost all mathematics done with vectors is done using column vectors. Vectors. The only field of math I can think of that uses row vectors frequently is probability. There are some applications in probability that use row vectors. But in this class, if I say vector, I mean a column vector. If I want to talk about row vectors, I'll say that explicitly. So a vector, a column vector, is something that looks like that. It has one column and however many rows it has. Properly speaking, then, a vector is just a special kind of matrix. That's usually not the right way to think of vectors, though, because the stuff that we do with vectors is pretty fundamentally different from the stuff we do with other types of matrices. You would never put a vector in reduced row echelon form, for example. There would never be any point if your vector has any non-zero entries and you put it in reduced row echelon form, you're always just going to get one and then everything else is going to be zero. So because it makes the most sense to think of vectors as being kind of their own thing, we give them their own notation. Instead of talking about three by one matrices, we talk about vectors in R3. Um, breaking this notation down a little, the three comes from the number of rows, the kind of funky looking R, is my attempt to create by hand the real number symbol, representing the fact that this vector is a vector of real numbers. 
vectors. You could talk about complex vectors, but we're not going to do that in this class. Similarly, as far as notation goes, matrices traditionally get named capital letters from the beginning of the alphabet, A, B, C, and so on. Vectors, traditionally lowercase, traditionally from the back half of the alphabet. And I mean, you sort of see where this came from, Somebody, somebody came up with the idea that V should stand for vector and then just started using other letters when they needed other vectors. And what's more, vectors, if you see your textbook, vectors are normally written in bold form. Of course, on the whiteboard, using bold is going to be a struggle. So vectors get their own notation where we put a brief horizontal line above the letter just to indicate that this is a vector. And um Sometimes you see, you know, sort of a little arrow above the vector. I just get a little informal. I write the horizontal line or I write the horizontal line and then hook it up a little. But that's our vector notation. And We're going to learn to add and subtract vectors and do something called scalar multiplication. Before we even get to that, let me make the kind of a little banal observation that two vectors can be equal to each other. Writing something like V, equals W is a mathematically coherent statement. And what an equality like this means is that the vectors have the same dimensions and they have the same entries in the same order. So the vector one, two, and the vector two, one are not equal, they're distinct objects. They both have a one and a two in them, but they're written in different words. We can add and subtract vectors from each other. But that statement requires a little qualification. To add or subtract vectors, the vectors have to be of the same size. So something like one, two, plus zero, three, negative one. This addition is not defined because the vectors 
aren't of the same size. One's in R2, the other's in R3. Otherwise, if they are the same size, addition and subtraction is done in what we call a component-wise fashion. And rather than write some super formal definition on the board, I'm just going to show it in action. If we have two vectors of the same size added together, we add the first components. So one and three, we add the second components. So two and negative one, we add the third components. So zero and four, and then we get, well, in this case, four, one, four. And, it, and subtraction just in the same way, like uh, one, two, minus three, negative five, Let's be careful not to make college algebra errors here. One minus three is negative two. Two minus negative five is seven. So addition and subtraction, hopefully pretty straightforward. We do not multiply vectors together, at least not, not in the way you might sort of intuitively expect. We don't have any sort of component-wise multiplication. And I mean, there are reasons for that, but I guess kind of the most concrete reasons is that it's worth this. That, def that definition of multiplication doesn't give us any interesting mathematics or interesting applications, so we don't do it. Um, what is useful in a bunch of applications is what we call scalar multiplication. And scalar multiplication is different from any kind of multiplication you've seen before, because we're multiplying two different types of objects. We're multiplying a number by a vector. And the result of this multiplication is a vector. And we, I think, I think there's one uh, section in the entire semester where we might talk about scalar multiplication by complex numbers, but until further notice, the, we're going to be working with the real numbers. So a real number times a vector. And once again, I think probably the best way to demonstrate or the best way to discuss this is just to see it in action rather than trying to write down a formal definition. 
to multiply a vector by a number, we multiply all of the entries in the vector by that number. So if we're multiplying that vector by four, we take each of the entries in the vector and multiply it by four. Any questions so far? I mean, you can always just throw up your hand or interrupt me if you do have questions, but I want to make sure I occasionally ask as well. Um, so this next frame, if you view it as something to be committed to memory, is going to seem very overwhelming. So I'm going to start with a take home message. And that take home message is that addition and scalar multiplication work the way you would expect. So rather than thinking of this as a list that must be committed to memory, let's just look at some properties. When you add real numbers, order doesn't matter. Two plus seven and seven plus two are the same. Vectors also have that property. When you add them, order doesn't matter. Real addition is associative. That is to say, if you add three real numbers together, you can put parentheses in wherever you want, and it doesn't change anything. Vectors have that same property. Addition by zero doesn't do anything. Any number plus zero is still that number. We have something similar for vectors. Although this definition or this statement does require a bit of comment. When I write the real number zero with a vector bar above it, I mean the vector of all zeros. So a vector whose elements are all zero. For real numbers, if you add a number to its negative version, you get zero. Three plus negative three is zero. Vectors have that exact same property. And by by negative u, I mean the scalar product of negative one and u. For real numbers, a multiplication distributes over addition. Same properties for the scalar product. 
So if we have, what number are we on? Five. So if we have, two real numbers, A plus B, and we've got to scale their product of that sum with a vector. Multiplication distributes over addition in precisely the fashion you'd expect. And it also works if you've got the vectors being added together. Scale their multiplication distributes over vector addition. We have an associativity property. When you multiply real numbers together, order, I mean, this is an order. When you multiply real numbers together, you can put parentheses wherever you want and it doesn't change anything. We have the same property for scalar multiplication. If we've got two scalars and a vector, we can move those parentheses around and it doesn't change anything. Multiplying any real number by zero gives you zero. Scalar multiplying any vector by zero gives us the zero vector. Actually, hold on. I mean, this is a true statement, but it's not the statement I wanted. The statement I wanted was that any vector scaled or multiplied by one is unchanged. And again, this is just a property that real numbers have. So going back to what I said a few minutes ago before um, when I sort of started this list, if you're thinking of this as like, these are properties that I must commit to memory, it's going to be kind of a pain, I think. What we really want is just this take-home method. When we're working with vectors, we can do the things we'd expect to be able to do, and it will all work out okay. And we are midway through 1.3 right now, so that's just where I wanted to be, and the class looks like it's about over in two minutes, so we'll